There. That's it. That's him. Como esta bienvenue, bitches? You know, you know who this is. Mr. Warren's back in the building to give you another one of my opinions, one of my diatribes, one of my, you know, one of my musings. Is that enough complex words for you? Alright, let me go in. I'm gonna, today I'm going to talk about the broken economy or the broken democracy that is known as America. I'm going to talk about how the world sees democracy and as, like, they see democracy as, like, it once was, was, was us. We were the beacon of democracy. Now what they see, they see democracy with a cast on it when they think about America. They see the government, they see the USA is in shutdown mode when it comes to America. They see the debt limit crisis, they see the rollback of civil rights, they see the giving of gay rights, they see the economics, the social, the military, they see us, they see this spinning out of control. That's how the world sees us. You know, they see it as, they see us as we're losing some of our, our grips on our shit, man. They say there's so much divisiveness that everybody isn't working for the same goal no more. Remember in America, and I remember in my 20s, even though Clinton was in office, that's, I remember the years of Clinton and Reagan. Like, and when Reagan was president, he sw I, look, I was a Reagan Democrat. I ain't gonna fucking front the game. I was a Reagan Democrat, because that old man was a bad motherfucker. I'll give him that. And there were, uh, there, there were Clinton Republicans who were Clinton Republicans. And, that, and that's what I said. Remember those, and those, during those times, people would, may not have liked each other, but we worked together to get where we're going. Now in the days of Bush and Obama, we have divisive politics, we have divisive policies, we have divisive everything. You know, America, America was great to begin with when all the, we got all the racial, religious, social, and et cetera, statuses that like defined who we were. Like everybody was here, you did, I remember when I was like in my 20s and it was true, man, I was like, as long as you worked hard and like did your thing, you could do it. And that's, it's still true today, but there's still some little hurdles you gotta jump over, but you gotta be willing to put in the work. That's what it boils down to. Now, as long as we have the same tax policies that favor the wealthy, you know, and as long as we have, you know, freestyle campaigns, you know, no, no campaign reform, you know, slow regulation of the banks. I mean, they're, they're regulated, but not, not as fast as they should be, you know, as long as you have people not reading the, the signatures when they go to borrow money for, you know, buying a house. Because I had to put some of the onus on the people who bought the houses because you didn't know that you you would have a bunch of balloon payments after two years. No, you didn't read your contract. As long as you're dependent upon the government, as long as we're, as long as the government is making you dependent upon them, as long as the Social Security is being used as a bank still, as long as, and all, here, here's a little fact about like Social Security y'all may not know. To borrow from Social Security, all they have to do is, and I think it's, a, it's, it's the one in Parkersburg, West Virginia. They got a little branch down there. It's like where all the, because at the time, this was, I forget what president it was. I think it was, I don't know, it was Truman through JFK. One of these presidents decided, like in, the, in a case of an attack, when if they bombed D.C., they wanted some, they wanted critical offices to have a lot of their stuff outside of D.C. So I think it's Social Security's in, I think the, 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 what the, not the office itself, the, what do they do all the social security bullshit? I think it's in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I think Senator Burr got it down there. I'm not in West Virginia, thank God, but uh, it's down there. And like, all they have to do to borrow from social security, and this is, and this escape, it'll escape you when you hear this, and I didn't believe it until I saw it myself, and I read about it. All they have to do is, is write an IOU. Ain't that fucking scary? You got some fucking G3 funky burning an IU for Social Security. I'm just saying, this is, this is crazy. But back to the lecture I have, you know. As long as, as long as us regular schmucks, you know, feel like they don't have a voice in America, America is going to still be a broken democracy. As long as America was built upon guys like me, guys on the working class. I mean, transportation, the roads, the construction period. Manufacturing, service industry. America was built upon the backs of the working people. And now America's built on the backs of the working people in China. It's just crazy. I just, it's just crazy to me, you know. 
And the people, like I said, people don't have the people nowadays feel they have a say in Washington. I mean, FYI, they never did, but it was just the illusion that you guys gave us that we had an opinion. But, I mean, but Washington's broke. You don't want to work together. Your policies are ineffective. You know, from Washington to the state house, it doesn't matter. To you, but but here's what a, here's what a local elected official told me one time. And uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drop the name, but he up there, he a mayor. And I was told that you know you have more, and this is true as I find out, you have more influence in your local area than you do as far as like state and national. That's out of that's out of your control. But you have a lot of influence in your local area. But if you choose not to use it, that's on you. But uh, this everything I say that before, this has killed the American dream for some people. They feel there is no American dream anymore. Now, the only American dream that we know now is fucking dusty roads. I mean, come on. I mean, now you, you know, you can, expect, you can expect to work more, getting paid less, and dying with your pension. Well, without your pension now. You know, life was great. I mean, there was a lot of upward mobility in the United States. You know, you can forget about that now. And especially if you live down south, you might as well, that's a fucking write off. You have to work four times as hard to make the same amount of money you were making in 1992. Chew on that, fuckers. And then the dollar is four times a week. Peace. There. That's it. That's him. <laughs>